So the reading shows a few ways of storing numbers. And in integers are easy because it, the way you can think about an integer, uh, well, just what you got from your previous classes. But just a little review. Let's say you had a car with an odometer. And hopefully your car has an odometer. Otherwise, that wouldn't be legal. Uh, but let's say your odometer only had uh, four spaces. Well, as your odometer counts 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as you're going through the miles, eventually you hit 9. And if you have one of those old school odometers that just has the rotating spindles or wheels or whatever on it, the 9, the next digit on the this wheel is a 0. So when it rolls over to 0, it just bumps its neighbor up to 1. And then it just, the process repeats, it goes round and round, and eventually it hits 9, and when it hits 0, it bumps its number again. And this repeats on and on, and the neighbor will keep continuing to be bumped and bumped and bumped until the neighbor hits 9. And as this one rolls up, yeah, 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 you get the idea. So now we have 9, 9, and this 9 here will roll to a zero, which bumps its neighbor, which will roll this to a zero, which will bump this neighbor and bump it to a one. So that's a base 10, or what we're used to in our cars. Well, say we had this imaginary country or whatever planet, if you want, and instead of each of these uh, rollers or spindles having 10 digits total, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so that's 10 digits total. Instead of having 10, let's say it only had 2, a 0 and a 1. So it goes 0, 1, but then the next time it's got to go back to 0. Well, when it goes to 0, it has to bump its neighbor. And then it's going to go 0, 1, and then the next digit on this spindle is a 0. So it goes to 0, bumping this neighbor, which rolls over to a 0. But since it's rolled to a 0, it bumps its neighbor. And it counts onwards and upwards, and that's the gist of binary. So instead of having 10 digits per spindle, we have 2. And the reason we use 2 instead of 10 in computers is because computers think in terms of switches or transistors and other kind of other deep dark, let's not go there for now, things. But that, that's essentially the gist of it. Well, an integer is 4 bytes, and 4 bytes... Well, one byte is 8 bits, so here is 8 bits. I separated them into groups of four. Groups of four are called nibbles. And in order to get a full integer representation here, I would need a total of 32 bits or four bytes. Well, it's hard to teach and it's hard to learn in 32, not because the concepts are any different. It's just that's a whole lot of binary digits in order to get some um, concepts across. So let's go back to 4. The, this, everything I teach you, the same will be true for 32 bits or 64 bits or however bit, many bits you want to go. So, well, now I'm just going to go back to the using an int. Let's just use an int here. Int my int gets 1. Well, the binary representation of this Actually, instead of using int, I can use short. Do you remember short? Short's a lot like int, except, uh, you know, um, let's just poke around. I'll see how. Let's look at the size of a short. The size of a short pop goes to two bytes. So I can handle, well, two bytes is 16 bits, so that's better. But anyway, we'll just use short. So short, my value gets one. And if I see out my value, um, I should see a 1. Very good. Well, what happens? Oh, boy, Visual Studio is thinking. Uh, what happens if I, I, I want to, the, the memory in-memory representation for this, um, let, let's just do the in-memory representation for this. Uh, so it's two bytes. There's my short. And this is a 1 in binary. Well, there's. This is going to be a little confusing because I have these symbols on the screen that look a lot like what we're about to use. But I'm going to say uh, my value gets my value 
shifted by one. So now instead of being the stream insertion operator, this is known as a bit shift operator. Down here, it's the stream insertion operator. Yeah, that's confusing. Sorry, uh, because it's uh, inserting things into the Cout stream. Just ignore it for now. Right here on this line is what I want to be concerned about. Basically, I'm saying take the bits in my value and shift them over by one. Well, and then and then whatever the result of that is, stuff it in my value. So the end result of that operation will take this one and move it over by one and fill this in with a zero. Well, what is this value in decimal? In binary, it's a, it, it, it's two. Okay, for bi binary decimal, it doesn't really matter. In fact, there's that old, well, yeah, let's not go there. Okay, see out my value. Boom. So just by shifting my value by one, uh, I I took it to two. Well, let's do it again. So my value shifted by one again. So that takes this, and it's going to move this one over yet another one. And let's run that. And, and binary, that is four. Hey, good deal. All right. Well, let's let's do another one that's little more let's be a little more uh, aggressive let's put a uh, five here Ooh, five so what's that going to do with our current value here well it's going to move it over five so one two three four five all the way up here and it fills the rest in with zeros <clears throat> and so that makes 128 and we're counting up well, 128 you know, notice every time we shift over by one we're multiplying by two so let's let's go again. Let's just let's let's go again by one, and 128. So that's going to push this one over to here. 128 times two is, do you know? You should know. 256. 512. 1024. We can keep going. Anyway, that's bit shifting. Uh, there's another operation. Well, let's stop there. That's enough. Bit shifting. We'll talk about um, oring and anding in the next video.